we can move on to the keep in bounding regions. Now this section is going to create a bounding box and it's difficult to see because it's actually within the sphere here. But we can size that up, so let's increase it in Y. And let's change our group type back to something like primitive so it's a little bit more uh, clear to see. So now what we're doing is we're grouping all of the primitives that are held within this box. But you may be wondering why it's not getting some of these other primitives, and that's because they're just slightly outside of the box. And you can kind of see that here at this angle. Uh, part of that primitive is, is outside of the box. But what if we want to keep those primitives as well? Well, we have this include partially contained entities. So when we tick that on, it's going to include everything, even if just uh, slight sections of it are within that box as well. So we can also change our bounding type to a sphere. And this again has the same effect. We can include partial or fully contained uh, entities. And we have our abilities to size our sphere or box and also to move the center of our sphere and box as well in uh, all three axes. So coming back to our bounding type, we can also see we have a bounding object. And now that's going to throw another error. And that's because it's requiring a bounding object to be placed into the second input. So let's go ahead and put a box down. And we'll plug that in. All right. And now the other reason why it's still throwing the error is because it's requiring points or vertices only. So let's change our group type to points. All right. And now uh, what essentially we've done is we've created our own bounding volume. So we could scale this up. And you'll see we now have control on this box. Uh, we can change its center. We can change its rotation, uh, its size, and uniform scale. And that is now being used as our bounding region for our point selection. And this doesn't need to be a box or a sphere. This is an opportunity to uh, input complex geometry as well, or to put mountain noise, or to modify a box or sphere, uh, or place any sort of geometry you want as the bounding region. So returning to our group node and our next bounding type, if we come down, is a bounding volume. So what that means is we can place down a, a VDB from Polygon node. VDB from Polygons. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert our box up here into a volume, uh, a voxel volume. So let's go ahead and decrease that resolution a little bit just so we have it looking more like our original box. And now in here, because we're using a volume, we can group those uh, points and vertices as well based on this volume. Uh, now it doesn't just have to be a VDB volume, we could also use a, a fog volume. So if I place down an ISO offset, and we plug that in as well. Now you'll see we have our fog, and we can increase those uh, divisions again to get it looking more like our original box. And But for some reason we're not getting any points selected, and that has to do with this ISO surface value here. You'll read it says that for an SDF volume, which was our VDB, a value of zero uh, is preferred. However, for a fog volume, a value of 0 0.5 and invert volumes for best result. So we need to put 0 0.5 in here, and you'll see uh, that it has collected all the points outside of our volume, which is why we have this invert button here. So when we turn that on, now we're grouping our our uh, points within our volume.